Hi children, welcome to our little ark lesson. And thank God that we can come to learn from His Word once again. And before we start, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this time that we can come before thee. Thank you, Father, for how you have been with the children, how you have watched over them, how you have protected them, and most importantly, how you have kept them close to thee. Father, we pray that on this Lord's day, you help the children to even know, Lord, that it is the Lord's day and to keep it holy as unto thee. And we pray, Father, as we come to know your word today, that you will be with the children and you help them to pay attention to the learning of your word. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So we thank God for today where we can come to learn from his word once again. And today we are learning from Lesson 33. What is Lesson 33 on? The title of the lesson is Dealing Righteously. Dealing Righteously. So the scripture text that we are going to learn from today is taken from Genesis chapter 38. Okay, Auntie Tammy will read all the verses and you will take the even numbered verse. Okay, the verses are like, for example, Verse 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, all the way to the end. And for the last verse, we will read it together. So Auntie Tammy will begin. Genesis 38, verse 1. And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned in to a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. And she conceived and bare a son. And he called his name Ur. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived and bare a son. And called his name Shelah. And he was at Kezib when she bare him. Verse 6. And Judah took a wife for Ur his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground lest he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Verse 11. Then said Judah to Tamar his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house till Shelah my son be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. And in process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep shearers to Timnath, he and his friend Hira the Adulamite. And he was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garments off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given unto him to wife. When Judah saw her, he taught her to be an harlot, because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Will thou give me a pledge till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet, and thy bracelets, and thy staff that is in thy hand. And he gave it her, and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. And she arose and went away, and laid by her veil from her, and put on the garments of widowhood. Verse 20, And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand. But he found her not. Then he asked the man of that place, saying, Where is the harlot? There was openly by the wayside, and they said, There was no harlot in this place. 
And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said there was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, Let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Behold, I send this kid, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, hath played the harlot. And also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her be burnt. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are, am I with child? And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet and bracelets and stuff? And Judah acknowledged them and said, She have been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to Sheila my son. And he knew her again no more. And it came to pass in the time of her travail, that behold, twins were in her womb. And it came to pass, when she travailed, that the one put out his hand, and the midwife took out and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. And it came to pass, as he drew back his hand, that behold, his brother came out, and she said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Phares. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zara. So today we're going to learn from today's lesson, okay? We're going to learn about Judah. But before that, let me ask you this. If someone promises you something, okay, promise you something that you like, okay, and this person actually, when this person promises you something, this person does not intend to keep his promise. How would you feel? What would you do to get what has been promised to you? Especially when this thing that has been promised to you, you really want it so badly and you thought that it would happen. Would you lie? Would you cheat to get what was yours? For example, let me give you an example. Your parents may promise to bring you to the zoo. Okay, they say if you have done well for your exams, they promise to bring you to the zoo. But they do not really mean it. Okay, I'm not referring to your parents, it's just an example, okay? And they probably only said so because so that you'll study hard for your exams and you do well. So when you have really finally done well and you thought you are able to go to the zoo, but your parents do not honor their word. They don't intend to bring you to the zoo and you find out about it, how do you feel? You feel disappointed, you feel upset. Some children may even cry, they may even throw a tantrum when they don't get what they want, when their promise is not fulfilled. In today's lesson, we learn about how a woman, she was treated badly, she was treated unfairly, and what she did because of how she was treated to get what she wanted, that was what was rightfully, she felt hers, okay? The first point I'm going to look at today is unrighteousness demonstrated. Unrighteousness, that means things that are not fair, these things that are wrong, and it showed, okay? And where can you read this from? You just read, and this can be found in Genesis chapter 38, verses 1 to 11. Judah left his brothers and father, and he stayed with the Canaanites, among the Canaanites. So if he stayed among the Canaanites, he met a Canaanite woman, he married her, and he had three sons. And the names we have just read, right, were Ur, Onan, and Shila. So Judah chose Tama. Tama is this lady that we're going to talk about today in today's Bible lesson. She's a Canaanite, so Tama, he chose Tama to marry his son Ur. However, Ur was wicked. The Bible says that Ur was wicked. The Bible did not say what he had done. But because of what he had done, God slew him. Because he had sinned. And thus, right, Tama's husband has died, all right, and she did not have any children. Both of them did not have any children. And during their time, there's this practice, there's this custom, okay, that's what they do. There was something called a liverite marriage. A liverite marriage, okay, that means that if a woman's husband dies, and she does not have any children. What happens? The brother of her husband, her late husband, that means the husband who has passed away, or 
maybe a, a relative, a male relative of her husband will marry her and have a child with her. Okay? And when, right, uh, this man has a child with her, the firstborn, that means the first child that they have, will belong to the brother who had passed away. Because he, he passed away before he could have a child. So this child, right, will belong to the brother who has passed away. And this child will also get the inheritance which, right, the father who has passed away was supposed to get. And it's not just the usual amount, it will be twice the amount. Okay, but whether this woman is able to marry her late husband's brother or relative depends on the father-in-law. Who's the father-in-law? Her late husband's father. Alright, this depends on the father-in-law. He must allow her to marry his younger son, one of his younger sons, okay, and to tell them to have children with her. So that is their practice. So through this first point, we're going to look at point A. Rejecting. Rejecting means not wanting. Not wanting responsibility. You know what's responsibility, right? Especially y'all who are older children. Y'all got responsibilities. As older children, y'all got responsibilities. Things that you have to do. Even if you don't want to do, you have to do. This is what your parents expect from you. Onan was the second brother. Okay? After the first brother has passed away, he refused. He didn't want. Okay? And what happened? God slew him. And Onan, right, he rejected. He didn't want this responsibility. And he probably did not want his brother. Okay? Probably, you know, why he refused is because probably he didn't want his brother to have a son. So that the, because that would mean that the son will have more of the inheritance. And if the son has more of the inheritance, it means that he gets lesser. Alright? And then there's another brother. The third brother, Sheila. But Sheila was still young. Too young to marry. So Judah promised to give Sheila to Tamar. Alright? Once he has grown up. So now at this time, meanwhile, what would Tamar do? She cannot be staying there. I mean, she could stay there. For Sheila to grow up, right? But what was arranged was Judah arranged for her to return to her father. So she will return to her own home, to her own father. She'll be a widow. Widow means someone has lost a husband. And she'll wait there till Sheila has grown up. What Judah has done was not a right thing to send Tamar home to her father because she's already married to Judah's family, right? She married Judah's son. Even though Judah's son has passed away, she has married into Judah's family and they were supposed to take care of her. And if you send her back home like that, it actually would shame her, especially during those times. People actually look down on widows. Point B, not keeping promise, not keeping the promise. A promise that you have made and in the end you do not keep it and that is not a good thing. When the time came, right, Judah said, oh wait for my son to grow up, wait for Sheila to grow up, he's old enough to marry. I'll let you marry him. The you is Tama. So when the time came and Sheila was old enough for marriage, did Judah keep his promise? Just as point B, right? The title of point B, right, mentions we have an idea that Judah did not keep his promise. Right? He could keep it. Right? Easy, right? Just oh I marry la. Just you know keep his promise. But he did not want to. He was reluctant. So when Sheila was old enough to marry Tama, he did not send for Tama. He did not cause Tama to come to send for her so that she can marry Sheila. He did not do that. All right? He did not keep his promise. So when you have made a promise, can you imagine Tama went back as a widow to stay with her father and she waited for quite some time? Right? Poor thing, right? And then in the end, Judah did not keep his promise. So what does it mean? Judah cheated Tama. He was not doing the right thing to her. And in this case, he was treating her badly. He was not being fair to her. Make her wait for so long and you never keep your promise. Point two, unrighteousness rebuke. Alright, the things that you have done wrong, you see how you are rebuked for it. Rebuke means what? Scolded, corrected. Okay, point A, buy a trap. Buy a trap. You see who is the one who made this trap. Tama realized, okay, that Judah was not going to let her marry Sheila. Okay, she could sense. How come so long still never call for me? And 
she could not just marry someone else because she's a widow, all right? And she did not have a husband. She did not have children. And she probably wanted to carry out her duty. She wanted to do her duty, right? To carry on her husband who has passed away, to carry on his family life. So she decided to do this. She decided to do things her own way. And she made a plan. So she set up the trap for Judah. So who was the one who set the trap? Tama. And who was the trap for? Judah. Tama met Judah when he was on the way to Timnath. He was going to shear his sheep. And through her plan, she tricked him into sleeping with her. And how was she able to trick Judah into sleeping with her? If he knew that this is the daughter-in-law, right? He clearly would not have done that, right? And Judah did not recognize Tama, probably because when he met her again, she had probably she probably had made a lot of makeup on, you know, or she put on different clothes. Because after her husband died, Tama actually had to wear widow's clothes, okay, which is not a like bright, bright kind of clothes, happy, happy looking clothes, no. So she always wore that, and that's what Judah saw her in. Judah, Judah knows that she'll be dressed in that kind of clothing. But now she had put on different clothes and her face was covered. So he could not recognize Tama. So she looked very different from the usual self. And she was probably, you know, not right, recognizable. And Judah thought, okay, instead of thinking this is my daughter-in-law, she thought that, he thought that she was a harlot. A harlot is a prostitute. A woman who has a job that's not good. She sleeps around with men in order to earn money. So he thought that she's like a prostitute. I wanted to sleep with her. And before that, okay, he gave her a promise, a pledge. A pledge is like a deposit. Okay, I want to buy something. I pay, for example, if something is $50, okay, I pay $10 first. Okay, then after that, the rest of the payment, I'll give you back when I come and collect. Okay, so as a pledge, what did Tama ask? She asked for Judas three things. Signet is a ring. Okay, it's a, a ring that acts like a stamp or a seal. It's a very personal thing. Okay, bracelet and a staff. Alright, and with these items, it's proof that it belongs to Judah. Judah will not be able to escape, to deny that these things do not belong to him. And with these items as proof, Tama could point Judah out as the one who slept with her. And did her plan work? Her plan worked. After sleeping with Judah, Tama had a child. Okay, she had a baby in her. And Judah then sent a baby goat to her as the rest of the payment. He did, still didn't know that it was his daughter-in-law that he slept with. And he sent her a baby goat as payment. It's also to get back his items, right? His ring, his bracelet, and his stuff. But Judah was not able to find Tama even when he went to the same spot where he found her, where he met her. And what happened? A few months later, Judah found out that Tama was expecting a baby, was with child. And he thought that she was sleeping with other men. Okay, so he was very angry. He wanted her to be burned, burned, okay, as a punishment publicly for everyone to see. Why? Because she has committed adultery. And the reason is because she's engaged to Sheila. And at that time, what did Tama do? She brought out, you see her plan. She brought out Judah's items, which he had left with her. And she showed, okay, that the person that she had committed adultery with was Judah. And Judah definitely could recognize his things. Point B, with repentance. Repentance is when you know what you have done, you know the sins that you have committed, and you're sorry about it. You are really sorry about it. Sorry that you have sinned. Sorry if you have done wrong. You do not want to do it again. That is what true repentance is. So did Judah realize his sin? He realized he had sinned when he did not give Sheila to Tama so that they could marry. He realized that he did not keep his promise. And he acknowledged, he said publicly that Tama was more righteous than him. Though what Tama did was wrong, Judah was also wrong. What he did to her was worse. Okay, not saying that Tama is right. Tama was also not right in deceiving. Okay, but through her deceptive plan, she got back what was rightfully hers. And Judah was the one who did not want to give it to her. Alright? 
So Judah repented of his sin, and through this, he grew, he matured, and he learned from his mistake. That's the best thing, okay? When we really repent from our mistakes and we change, and he learned to take responsibility and to do his duty. And how do we know this? Because later on in Genesis chapter 43, verses 8 to 9, okay, you can note it down. Genesis chapter 43, verses 8 to 9, as well as Genesis chapter 44, verses 33 to 44. We see how Judah would take responsibility for his brother Benjamin. And that's where we realize that he had changed. He promised, okay, that he would take responsibility just as he promised his father Jacob because he promised this to his father's father, Jacob. And he was even willing to sacrifice his life for his brother. Okay, and this actually made Joseph to show, to reveal his identity, who he truly was to his brothers. Okay, so what happened to Tama? Tama gave birth to twins. Okay, the name of the twins, as we have just read, we have as we have read, sorry, in the scripture reading at the beginning, their names are called Phares and Zara. Phares will become the ancestor of Jesus Christ. So we see, even though Judah and his sons, they were not righteous, okay, and Tama, she was very deceiving, right? she used a plan that was deceptive, but God used them to carry on the messianic line, the line in which the Lord Jesus Christ will come from. And this, what does this show? It shows that God is good, children. God is gracious. God is good. God's grace. For such people who do not deserve it, don't, okay, in this lesson, they say, ah, yeah, they're also bad. They're also bad. We look at ourselves. We also do not deserve God's goodness. But God chose to be good to us. And God, in His grace, Right? Even when these people do not deserve it, he chose them. He chose them to be part of his saving plan. Realize that there's no perfect people. If God were to use only perfect people, there will be no one, zero. Okay? So conclusion. What's the lesson that we can learn today? Unrighteous dealings can be in the form of cheating others. Okay, you see how Judah was unrighteous in his ways. All right, and examples of this is also cheating others. So let us ask ourselves today: Are we guilty of that? Are we cheating others? And don't say, hey, don't be so quick to say, "Oh, I never cheat." Okay, let's go on to see what does it mean. Not giving them what they deserve or promise to them. Ah, you promise. Uh, we like to every time make promise, anyhow make promise, and then we don't keep it. That we must also be careful. Because God hates unrighteous dealings and God will right the wrong. So what have we learned? Three points. You must learn to deal righteously righteously with others. Don't cheat them. Remember, you are a child of God. Cheating should never be in any of your ways. Just as God, the God that you follow is the God of truth, your ways must be that of truth. Point two. If someone rightfully deserves something from you, you must give it to them. You promise them, you give it to them. And if you have promised someone something, keep your promise. But don't do it to an extent that you break God's law, you you, you disobey God's word. That is not how God wants it to be. So we thank God for the lesson today and we pray that God will help us even to deal righteously, to be righteous, not to deceive others. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this time. We thank you for your goodness towards us. Even thank you for this lesson that we can learn from thy word today. We pray, Father, that you help us to be honest in all our ways. And when we have promised anyone something, Lord, that we pray that you will give us thy grace, thy enabling to fulfill it, that we may bear good testimony for thee. We pray, Father, that you keep the children close to thee, even help them, Lord, to go to thee, to pray, Lord, and to keep themselves very close to thee, even as there are many temptations around them. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.